New England winters are not what they used to be, and that's already having some major impacts on the region, from flood risks to much shorter seasons for winter sports like skiing and snowboarding. To discuss, I'm joined by meteorologist and GBH News partner Dave Epstein and Elizabeth Burakowski, a research assistant professor at the Earth Systems Research Center and Institute for the Study of Earth, Oceans, and Space at the University of New Hampshire, not to mention an avid snowboarder. Thank you both so much for joining us. Thank you, Brian. Good to be here. So, uh, Dr. Burakowski, let's start with you. Y- you, uh, as you said, are, uh, uh, as I said, is an avid snowboarder or split boarder, I think, as well. Uh, what has this season been like for you? It has been very challenging to get out. Um, as a snow researcher as well, I recorded my first December without any measurable snow at my field site here in Durham, New Hampshire. And that was pretty heartbreaking. Uh, to be able to get out and recreate in the snow has also been a huge challenge. I typically like going Nordic skiing out my back door, but this year has been a very small handful of days that I've actually been able to do that due to the lack of snow. In terms of backcountry conditions, so skiing not at a ski resort, but in the woods near the ski resort, that too has been a big challenge. There has not been a lot of natural snowfall and it's seriously lacking in terms of big storms. Yeah, yeah. And I know you're uh, part of an organization called Protect Our Winters. Can you talk about what they do and, um, and you know, what's happening more broadly? Yeah, I had gotten involved with them back in the early, like 2010, I suppose, was the first time I I worked with them. And we've been looking at changes in how climate impacts the ski industry. And we've been talking a lot with outdoor recreators in general, people who enjoy the outdoors and, and wanting to know more about how it's impacting their ability to get outside and enjoy the snow. And it's also, you know, a lot about the economy. So in northern New Hampshire, a big chunk of our economic spending and visitor spending is coming from the ski resorts that are here. So when they have a tough year like this year, it has an impact on not just them, their bottom line, but also the local community as well. It has an impact on jobs and it also has an impact on just the ability for people to enjoy winter in the way that culturally we, we've really had a great run doing that. Do we know how bad the impact is this year on that industry? I haven't seen the numbers out yet this year. They typically will announce that in June. Um, It's going to be a challenge. I would say the December 2023 storm, it was a big rain on snow event that closed several ski resorts, is going to have a pretty decent impact. And unfortunately, I I just really hope that next year is much better. Dave, so far this season, we've seen 9.7 inches in Boston, right? That compares to an average of 34.6 inches for for this date up to february 21st i guess um what's going on here is this is this the the new normal yeah i mean there's a lot of stuff going on of course we have the fact that the planet's warming up and so there's pressure on new england to have less snow winter is the fastest warming season of the four new england is bearing the brunt of a lot of that warming there's also some natural cycles that occur so if you look over All the years since 1872, we get these little pockets of about a decade or so where you have a snowy decade and then a not so snowy decade. So if you go back uh, prior to 2016, that decade was very snowy, actually the snowiest decade on record in greater Boston. Pretty amazing. Not that long ago. Well, if anybody remembers the winter of 2015, they know all too well that uh, it wouldn't stop snowing then. But it basically hasn't snowed since. Yeah, that's right. We've had many winters that have been below average since more winters, certainly below average last winter, topping out around a foot in Boston this winter. If we don't see 11 inches, which is highly unlikely, we're going to end up with the first back to back seasons since 1872 under 20 inches. So there's definitely the climate piece as well as the natural cycle both going on. Yeah, and it's important to understand that there is a difference between weather and climate, right? But To what degree can we say that what is happening now is a result of climate change, Dave? It's it's not really, that's not the language we kind of want to use because you can go back to 1936, 37 that had less snow in that winter, right? But what's happening is, is that the pressure is increasing that the type of winters we're seeing this year will become more frequent. So there's been winters in the past that are open and relatively mild. But the number of those winters is increasing and the number of snowy cold winters is decreasing. That's the difference. Okay, Dr. Burkowski, I know your research focuses a lot on snowpack and climate. Uh, What are you seeing beyond just a, a bad ski season? What are you seeing this year? 
We're also seeing a decline in um, soil freezing. So it, you know, this was a really challenging year for snowpack um, in terms of how warm it was. We really didn't have a lot of days that were even below freezing. So we, we saw some interesting trends with, with soil frost. We're also looking at impacts um, that are on the ecosystem. So the loss of cold is, is important for invasive species. So hemlock woolly delgate, for example, emerald ash borer, those affect our forest health. Um, we also have impacts on maple syrup season, uh, tapping earlier, having lower quality syrup. Uh, those are, are also impacts that we're keeping an eye on. And in terms of what I look at in my research, I, I also look at climate projections into the future. And what we're seeing is that the winters like this, like uh, David said, is, are going to become more common. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the models that I had been looking at, they weren't predicting models that were this snowless in the Northeast until many years later, like several decades out. So to see this type of winter now has me a bit on edge, um, a bit alarmed. I acknowledge also the El Nino you know, Southern Oscillation, we're, we're in an El Nino year, but we've had El Nino years in the past. And this year has just been off the charts in terms of warming. When you look at Massachusetts, this is what their top five, when it's in the top five warmest record winters. And then New Hampshire, New York, Vermont, we're all in, that was the, it was our warmest winter. And we haven't seen, like you had said, a cold winter colder than the long-term average since 2015. I learned an interesting and an important word today that I did not know, which was albedo. Uh, Dr. Burakowski, can you explain that and what does that mean for our climate? Yeah, I mean, so albedo is essentially the reflectivity of a surface. Um, how much of the light that hits that surface is going to get reflected back out to space. It ranges from zero to one. Something like sea ice is going to be highly reflective, snow as well. Um, so when you have more snow and more ice, you're going to reflect more of the sun's energy, and that helps to see, keep the surface cool. And when we don't have that, when you have a darker surface, such as a forest, such as open water, um, even grass, that's going to be a lot darker, and it's going to absorb more of the sun's energy. That makes things warmer. So the acceleration of snow loss that was recently identified in a study from Dartmouth, that was looking at a critical threshold of temperature beyond which you start having this snow cliff, right? So if temperatures in winter on average are warmer than 17.6 degrees Fahrenheit, then you're going to see a very rapid loss of snowpack. And I think that's what we're seeing here, and it's probably tied a bit to albedo. So the, the, the snow reflects that light, that heat, and without it, it we're just absorbing it into the mm-hmm. ground. Okay. Uh, Dave, uh, I know you're not a groundhog, but uh, are we looking, we're look, looks like we're looking at an early spring here, and uh, that's not necessarily a good thing. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely been, you know, as Dr. Burke said, a much warmer than average winter. The lowest temperature Boston got to was 14. We've never seen a winter where the temperature has stayed that warm at night the entire season. I've got kale in the garden, which made it through the entire winter unprotected. It's already starting to grow. Uh, Soil temperatures are already warm. I planted peas already. They're under a little bit of plastic to protect from the moisture, but the soil's definitely really didn't freeze very much the entire winter. We had that one week around Martin Luther King week or day that was cold, but that's about it. So the winter that wasn't really is never going to get underway and we're on to spring. All right. Well, hopefully it'll be better skiing next season. Elizabeth Burkowski and Dave Epstein, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.